Is this... a letter? Upend the ancient sea and return to old ground. It's a letter for Don Hung, but who is it from? I should ask the conductor. from there, right? Unlikely. If the general sent the letter, he would have signed it. Why don't you show Don Hong the letter? You know where to find him. I'm certain that no one entered this car. So who delivered the letter? Oh, this is giving me the shivers. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Do you need something? <sighs> There's no signature. And it doesn't mention a time or place. <laughs> Looks like whoever sent this expects me to remember. Unfortunately, I'm going to disappoint them. Thanks, but I don't even know where to start. <sighs> Let me hold on to the letter. Anything related to Don Feng's past should be handled with care. Just as I thought, there was more than met the eye. <sighs> Letting her leave first was a wise choice. I can't put her in danger again because of this. But if he didn't send the letter, then who did? Hmm. Maybe I should make a trip to the Seat of Divine Foresight. I need to ask Jin Yuan about the Stellaron Hunters. After all this time away from the Lafu, the seat of divine foresight has only become more hostile. It's quite reassuring. Relax, you needn't be so cautious, young man. I'm just reminiscing about the old days. 
However, I never thought Jing Yuan would send you to accompany me. <laughs> it would seem our fates are intertwined. Huh? <sighs> I've got my work cut out for me today. Well, if it isn't Don Hung. Greetings. I need to speak to the general about something. <laughs> Looking for compensation for the injuries I gave you? I accept full responsibility. They can deduct my next hundred years' salary if they like. <laughs> that won't be necessary. The Cloud Knights were doing their duty. I should be apologizing for any damage I caused myself. You came at a bad time. The General is busy with urgent work. You probably won't be able to meet with him today. But he did leave a message. Don Hung, do you recognize the person on the steps? <sighs> no. If the General isn't available, I'll come back another day. You don't remember her? <sighs> I see. I suppose the memories of your previous life really were wiped clean after the rebirth. That is Jing Liu, the previous sword champion of the Xianzhou La Fu. She was the closest friend of Imbibitor Lun A, your previous incarnation. She was also the general's master. According to records of wars past, her blade has slain countless denizens of abundance. Not even the feather guards of the wing weaver, the father wolf of the Borazin, or the gigantic mecha beast could withstand a single strike from her. She's a renowned legend. However, those are ancient stories. It's a shame that even a hero like her wasn't able to break free of Mara. It is said that in the end, Jing Liu lost her sanity and slaughtered anyone in sight. She was deemed a criminal and fled to outer worlds. With her powers, you'd think there would be no one capable of bringing her in. <sighs> For some reason, she arrived on the Lafu with a suspect disguised as a traveling merchant and said she wanted to turn herself in. Her surrender came with one condition, that she be allowed a day of freedom before the trial. She wanted to travel to Scale Gorge Waterscape and meet with her old friends one last time. I can't believe Jing Yuan actually agreed. Before he left, he ordered us to accompany Jing Liu during her last day on the La Fu. We're hosting an honored guest. We're escorting a criminal. Imbibitor Lune, you're here. Since you traveled all this way, why don't you come and talk with me? <laughs> or should I call you by your name in this lifetime, Don Hung? Master Dunhung, she's asking for you specifically. Be careful. Don't underestimate her. <sighs> when I left the Sienjo, I heard they took away your scales and horns, forced you into a hatching rebirth, and detained you in the Shackling prison. I thought Imbibitor Lune had been wiped from this world. But then I returned to the Lafu and watched as you parted the sea. <laughs> After all these years, it was a magnificent sight to behold. Do we... know each other? <laughs> 
The answer to that is both yes and no. However, your cold and indifferent tone is identical to the person I knew back then. If my guess is correct, the preceptors were unwilling to allow the i line to end and hoped for the Imbibitor Lunae's resurrection. That is why they tampered with the Molten Rebirth and turned you into what you are now. You're not here to reminisce on old times. Tell me why you're here. You didn't hear? That Vidyatara girl explained it clear as day. I returned to the La Fu so I could surrender myself to the Alliance and atone for my sins. I did, however, have one request before the trial. I asked to be given a single day to go and see old friends, and to fulfill promises I made long ago. <laughs> Jing Yuan has always been an understanding person. He heard that you would be coming and agreed to my request. So, you're the one that mailed the letter to the Express? <laughs> That's right. The sea's depths conceal no stone, and dragon's breaths reveal the moon. The scenery of Scale Gorge waterscape is truly as magnificent as the poems describe. But as a suspect, shouldn't I be bound and interrogated in the shackling prison? Is it really appropriate to bring me to a place like this, General? Holding you in the shackling prison would be more trouble than it's worth. For security purposes, we will be performing your trial here. <laughs> For security purposes? I suppose it's not my security you're talking about. The Stellaron's descent, the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection, the Destruction Emanator's impersonation of the Anacassiter. According to the Skyfaring Commission's investigations, you arrived on the La Fu with a group of merchants, but didn't make a single trade during your stay. Your departure coincided with the day the calamities took place. You took advantage of the chaos to sneak into the Shackling Prison, but seemingly took no course of action. Now you claim that you are responsible for the Stellaron Crisis and wish to surrender yourself. Your behavior truly is puzzling. I can't seem to piece together your motive. I was asked to deliver a token in my capacity as a traveling merchant. I knew nothing of its significance. I admit I did have my own agenda for entering the Shackling Prison, but in the end, I found that the La Fu did not possess what I was looking for. It is through fear of punishment that I am choosing to surrender. The galaxy is a vast place, but I am merely a wanderer. It would be silly of me to think that I could outrun the Alliance. Merely a wanderer? <laughs> You're too modest, Lacha. Do I need to remind you of your actions at the Eternity Fortress? And the Shroud Veil vale Star Zone? Or must I utter that tongue twister of a name? I. <laughs> well, they don't call you the Divine Foresight for nothing, General. Hm, you flatter me. Fortunately, I did my research, or this conversation would have been quite dry. Seeing that you sense something is amiss, are you looking to defend me and clear my name of suspicion? <sighs> that is beyond my control. Attempting to undermine the Alliance is a grave crime. 
According to protocol, you are to be held on the Xianzhou Shu Ling for a joint trial before the Ten Lords Commission and the Seven Arbiter Generals. However, at present, you have the opportunity to enjoy the beautiful scenery of Scale Gorge Waterscape. It will be the last view of the Law Fu you ever lay eyes on. She told me that the High Cloud Quintet once gathered and feasted here hundreds of years ago. The unparalleled sword techniques of your master, the mesmerizing cloud hymn magic of imbibitor Lune Dan Feng, the artful piloting skills of Bai Hung, the divine weapons crafted by the Ju Ming artisan Ying Sing, and the unmatched stratagem of the general. The five of you vanquished evil from the world, creating legendary tales in your wake. Unfortunately, nothing lasts forever, and the High Cloud Quintet disbanded as each of you went your separate ways. You removed me from the shackling prison and decided to interrogate me here, but not for security purposes. You wish to discuss things that shouldn't be overheard. You wish to discuss the one person you've avoided mentioning up to now. Your master, Jing Liu. We can head out now. Mm. I would like to visit a few places from my memories, enjoy a glass of wine, and reminisce about the good times. <laughs> Have you mistaken yourself for a tourist? <laughs> I would make a wonderful tourist. Lower your guard, young man. I have already surrendered myself to the Alliance, and I will keep my word. Besides, your general has already agreed to my request. In Bibiter Lune, you must accompany me. I won't take no for an answer. Regardless of whether you're still interested in your previous life, accepting my letter means that you've accepted my invitation. Lead the way. Where should we start? Should we go to Stargazer Navalia first, or to the Artisanship Commission? So many memories are swirling inside my head. I can't get a grasp on any of them. <sighs> when the people of the Sienjo live to be more than a thousand years old, each day is like carrying the weight of a mountain through an interminable maze. Uh, how hard is it to choose a destination? We're going to Stargazer Navalia. Problem solved. <laughs> the young are the antidote. Stargazer Navalia it is. If it's star skips you wanted to see, we could have headed to the Jade Gate. Why did we come all the way here? <laughs> Young man, have you ever heard of Bai Hung, the Foxian pilot? Bai Hung? Huh, I think I've seen that name somewhere before. Let the noble High Elder drown the enemies in rain. We just need a watch from the sky, I presume? <laughs> in Bibiter Lune, if memories are returning to you, share them. 
I think she was one of Imbiber de Lunay's comrades. She was a comrade and friend to both Imbiber de Lunay and all of us. Well, that's all in the past now. The reason we came to Stargazer Navalia is because I wanted to pay tribute to her here. Huh? You mean the Foxy and Soul Soothing Ceremony? Yes, the sending off of a star skiff. It represents the voyage of the deceased into the stars. Due to circumstances beyond my control, I never had the chance to bid farewell to her. It is something I have regretted to this day. As for procuring a star skiff, I know they can be manufactured here, but I know nothing of the process. I see. Follow me. Uh, I don't know anything about manufacturing star skiffs either. But getting these machines to work shouldn't be too hard. Careful. There's still Stellaron spirits lurking around. <laughs> no. The moon shines on the truth. We've arrived. All ship production in Stargazer Navalia starts here. Just enter the command into the device. The vessel used to cultivate star skiff seeds will be activated, and a ship will appear in the skyport soon after. Ah, uh, I remember now. I've seen Bai Hung's name in books before. You like to read? I couldn't tell. Hey! I don't read much, but the General forced me to finish a bunch of ancient volumes during my training. I remember one called Views of the Universe from a Star Skiff. The author's name was Bai Hung. That's right. Bai Hung was the one who wrote that travelogue. It was actually really interesting. 90% of it was about Star Skiff crashes on different worlds and dangerous situations. It also had records of local species and ecosystems. I remember thinking, how could an ace pilot crash land her star skiff so many times? Then I realized that every time, she made the best of the situation and got back alive. Ah, her luck really was out of this world. Indeed, her luck always astonished us. Whenever she piloted a mission, you could almost guarantee a narrow escape from the jaws of some abundance behemoth, or a miraculous return from behind enemy lines. Very few star skiffs she piloted were able to return to port in one piece. The folks at the Skyfaring Commission secretly referred to her as the Star Skiff Killer. She also possessed an uncanny ability to predict future events, inauspicious ones at least. Every ill omen that came out of her mouth would sure enough come true. Very few Cloud Knights had the courage to accompany her on missions. However, when it came to surviving, her fortunes were incredible. Even in the worst situations imaginable, she was always able to turn the tide. Luck is a type of strength, after all. I hope that this ship, built for the Star Skiff Killer, will also be able to return to the stars. Ha! <laughs> That'll do it! The Star Skiff assembly line has been activated! The Star Skiff will take shape and enter the Skyport. Let's go wait for it there. It won't be long. <sighs> Thank you, young man. See? The Star Skiff
Goliath is complete! After being away from the Law Fu for so long, I can finally say farewell to you. So, what happened to Bai Hung in the end? In the end, I do not think the details are necessary. We are here today to commemorate her. In Bybiter Lune, do you still remember the battle against Shu Hu? The Abundance Emanator, Shu Hu, rallied a great army and attacked the Alliance. I read about it in the Shackling Prison. You seem to be interested in learning about your past life. Still, all of that was erased. After Shu Hu attacked the borders, he disappeared without a trace. There are no records of his remains, either. Let me refresh your memory. During that battle, Bai Hung, being the headstrong girl that she was, managed to exhaust the luck that was bestowed upon her by the Rainbow Arbiter. She charged ahead and shattered the enemy's defenses, allowing the Sienjo soldiers to break through Shu Hu's sanguinary abyss and awaken you from your dragon's delirium. She was not able to walk out of that fight. We all shoulder a debt that we will never be able to repay. For the Cloud Knights, giving up one's life on the battlefield is an honor. But that wasn't something you believed in, in Bybiter Lune. You couldn't accept that Bai Hung was gone. Instead of leaving her to eternal rest, you decided to... <sighs> you made a mistake that can never be undone. <sighs> there is no need to respond, Inbibiter Lune. Your answer is no longer important. And now, I will send off this star skiff. By Hung, I've brought your flagon. This was a gift handmade by him though he never got the chance to give it to you in person. I'm sorry it took so long for me to find it. Only by bringing it to you will my nightmares be calmed. I will fulfill what you asked of me. I will keep my word, even if it requires me to cut down the stars in the sky. Let's go. The Artisanship Commission is next. <sighs> Since the Arbor's resurrection, the land has been crawling with abominations. Even the Artisanship Commission's prized creation furnace is hanging on by a thread. <sighs> the crisis happened too suddenly. All the craftsmen and apprentices fled. Only a single master craftsman was left to hold the line until reinforcements arrived. That's how the creation furnace was saved. Interesting. Stubborn beyond valuing his own life. That reminds me of an extremely arrogant acquaintance. 
If he were to see the chaos of the Artisanship Commission today, he would burst into laughter at the Sienjo's incompetence. What's that supposed to mean? What's wrong with saving your own life and waiting for the Cloud Knights to arrive? And yet where were the Cloud Knights when danger was at the door? From what I heard, it was a group of Outworlders that came to the rescue. The Lafu's Delves are big places. Besides, some of the troops were deployed to the Yao Qing's campaign. The Cloud Knights were spread thin. It was impossible to guard everywhere at once. <laughs> Young man, why don't we continue our previous contest? Show me whether the sword techniques you are so proud of have improved. You just want me to do all the work. You think I'm gonna grant endless requests for a criminal? You go on ahead this time. We'll meet up at the Creation Furnace. Why did you send him away? It is of no importance. But you and I haven't had a decent contest in ages. <sighs> I don't plan on fighting. I'm not asking you to point your spear at me. Could it be that the abominations here aren't enough to motivate you? <laughs> Even after your rebirth, your moves and techniques haven't changed one bit. When I move... It's like... Like you never forgot. Come on already. <laughs> what took you so long this time? Don't get anxious and by bitter Lune. We have all the time in the world. Right. Don't think about running. This spear still Stay recognizes alert. you as its master. In Bibiter Lune, do you know revealed. who crafted it for you? It's been with me ever since my exile. I don't remember when I started wielding it. In Lunar Flame. You can continue to convince yourself that you are merely the reincarnation of Don Fung and have nothing to do with his sins. And you can keep insisting that you have forgotten everything. But you cannot run from combat, Don Hung. Your spearmanship is identical to Inbibitor Lunay's. Combat is like smelting. Purging the impurities with burning flames and exposing a person's true nature. Those are the words of the one who made Cloud Piercer for you. <laughs> Do you remember? Out of all of us, you were the closest to him. It was strange, really, to see someone so arrogant get along with someone so proud. This spear is sharp enough to pierce dragon scales. Be careful, High Elder, lest you hurt yourself with it. <sighs> Ying Xing. <laughs> you still remember his name. When he was but a child, he swore to take revenge on the abominations. That's what drove him to travel across the stars to the Sienjo to receive training. When I first met him, he wasn't even as tall as my sword. But he was boasting about mastering all the crafts of the Artisanship Commission by the time he was a hundred years old. 
The little brat was no less arrogant than the High Elder. At first, I wasn't too fond of his defiant nature. But when we met again, he was able to craft weapons that astonished the Master Craftsman. He even snatched the Artisanship Commission title of Furnace Master. Unfortunately, the Alliance would never allow a short-life species to run the Artisanship Commission. He was only able to prove his worth alongside us outcasts in the end. You didn't go easy just so I would get here first, did you? Of course not. Your technique must have improved so much that I simply couldn't keep up with you. Hmm. So, uh, are we here to commemorate your short life species friend? Eavesdropping is a bad habit. Besides, when did I ever say he was no longer in this world? Hmm. <laughs> Even the cryocapsules wouldn't be able to extend the life expectancy of a short life species for long. If he is still alive, he must be ancient. He transformed... into a long life species? Correct. Such are the twists of destiny. Some people are born with unparalleled foresight and exceptional intelligence, but make the most ill-advised choices at Destiny's crossroads. As smart as he was, he made the foolish attempt to use the flesh of the Abundance Emanator to aid in Bibiter Lune in resurrecting his deceased companion. His stupidity turned him into a monster, cursed with immortality. His soul was shattered and became the evil that he hated most. The irony. Ugh, for an old friend, you don't seem to have that much pity. I gave him a second chance. Does that not count? What did you do to him? He should have been eternally jailed in the shackling prison for his crimes. But I gave him a different kind of freedom. I took the shell that once held his soul and passed my sword techniques on to him. I let him die a hundred deaths to remind him of the karma of his previous life. Afterward, I heard he was reborn, and even gave himself a name. <sighs> We've idled too long. Let's head to the Alchemy Commission. As a follower of the Rainbow Arbiter, you have witnessed the catastrophe brought upon by the Plague's author, General. Living beings turning into undying monsters, eventually used as sacrifices to the Abundance. What do you think should be done to put an end to it, General? The Alliance follows the Rainbow Arbiter's edict to continue ridding the world of evil so that one day Yaoshir might be vanquished and the cycle of life and death restored. Under the auspices of the Rainbow Arbiter, the faithful Cloud Knights continue the hunt. Their devotion and sacrifices are indeed commendable, but their devotedness has made them close-minded. Take me, for example. My powers originate from the Abundance, Yet my goals are aligned with the Alliance. The Hunt is not the only faction in the universe that wants Yaosha dead. It is natural for short-life species to yearn for immortality. That is expected of any intelligent life form. 
To want to eliminate these thoughts would be equivalent to killing an eon. Such a goal is so impossible as to be laughable, to be honest. So, in order to sever Yao Shi's curse, one must look to the source for a different solution. Your master happened upon a revelation and returned from the Mara. She has traveled many worlds and discovered a solution. I'm listening. I apologize, General. I'm afraid the next move will have to be made on the Shu Ling. <laughs> As I expected. Your surrender is just the next step in your scheme. You wish to avail yourself of the Ten Lords' decree to enter Shu Ling and stand before the Six Generals, even the Marshal. That is your true agenda. And the purpose of the contents of your coffin. General, you said it yourself. This is beyond your control. It is the law of the Alliance. We cannot deviate from it. <laughs> Splendid, well done. This was a spectacular move. You've changed, Jing Yuan. The man I knew would never have admitted he was bested. Order's already been restored to the Alchemy Commission. Why are we here? I heard the Healer Lady is capable of curing all diseases. I'm here for the same reason anyone would be. For a checkup and consultation. Patience, young man. We're not far from Scale Gorge Waterscape. The mission the General tasked you with is about to come to an end. <gasps> Dunhung! What a surprise! Uh, are you not feeling well? Please, come this way! Uh, Miss Bailu. She's here for a consultation. Oh, I see! Are you here for your eyes? Or is it something else? My eyes are fine. I cover them to avoid seeing that which reminds me of the past and riles my inner demons. My thoughts have been disordered lately, and I experience occasional night terrors. Do you have a way to soothe my mind, Dragon Lady? Hmm, those symptoms don't sound like my area of expertise. Bah, who cares? The healers of the Alchemy Commission don't get to pick and choose their patients. Give me your hand. We'll start by checking your pulse. You'll need to take some translucent worms so I can take a closer look. Oh, your hand! It's freezing! Uh... Please wait. Dan Hung, can I speak to you for a minute? Uh, your friend here has a very peculiar condition. Her pulse is extremely faint. Normally, this would mean that she... There's no cure. Let the healer make the professional diagnosis. Uh, your friend's situation is unique. She looks healthy, but her hands are cold as ice. It feels like there's a dark current running and pulsing between her core essay and her veins. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. 
With more research, I might be able to make a new entry in the medical records. Can you and your friend come back for follow-up visits? Today's her last day on the Lo Fu. Ah, what a shame! If she could stay for a few days, I might be able to figure out how to cure her. Ah, I'll do my best. No matter what I administer, she's gonna need to drink a ton of warm water from this point on. Come with me! I'll prescribe her some soul-returning vitality infusion. I won't cure her, but I'll... Wait! Where did my big medicine box go? I'm sorry. Ever since the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were expelled, things have been a mess around here. Tan Hung, you mind coming with me to retrieve my medicine? I could use your skills. Are you in trouble, Dragon Lady? I'll come along as well. No, 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 no. <laughs> no trouble at all. <laughs> It's no bother. A little walk will do me good. Ah. Hmm. I can smell the herbs. It's a rock. Hey! Give me back my medicine box! Ah, that thing runs so fast! Don't let it get away! Allow me to eliminate these obstacles, Dragon Lady. Stand back. The chill of my sword freezes everything in its path. Stay alert! <laughs> Lance ablaze! Lance forward! <laughs> So this is why your hands are so cold! Show no mercy. Come. This cold isn't something normal flesh could withstand! World cleansing dragon. <laughs> Too long behind the lights. Blade of Moonlight. Missing. Excellent. The calming valerian and chi strengthening infusions are here. Let's head back. Never make a patient wait too long. Danger. again for the delay. This prescription won't cure you, but it will nourish your body and calm your mind. Very well. The fate of a long-life species is inevitable. 
Even with the best doctors. You're Mara struck? I don't see the symptoms in you at all. What with the incident on the Law Fu, I've treated a number of Mara stricken patients recently. They all presented with signs of incoherence, delirium, or frightening physical mutations. You don't seem to have any of that. I made a deal that allowed me to retain what life I had left in me. I may be sane, but one thing is certain. My mind is already at its limit. And yet, I still have many unfulfilled wishes and plenty of unfinished business. I see. So you've learned to live with your illness. I can't help much with issues of the spirit, but the medical records do mention that calming the mind is a way to heal the body. If you're able to forget about the past, there might be a chance for your symptoms to regress. Really? How unfortunate. My hatred overshadows my other emotions. I chose to hold on to it, to embrace it, and to use it to maintain my existence. All I have left are the sword in my hand and my hatred of the past. If I am without either of them, I would fall into an empty void. Thank you for your advice, Dragon Lady. Meeting you has provided more healing than any kind of medicine or remedy. By the way, among those you've treated in recent days, did you notice a person in bandages? Bandages? That's a vague description, you know. I'm not sure. We get injured patients from all over the Xianzhou for treatment and the number of injuries we see has skyrocketed since the Ambrosia Arbor crisis. The person I'm inquiring about is tall, with a serious expression. He also carries a crude sword with him at all times. Have you seen someone like that, Dragon Lady? Hmm... Someone came by today that matches that description. He must have suffered some kind of sword wound. He had a strong scent of blood. Though, from the way he behaved, it must have been fairly minor. He didn't even take the medicine I prescribed. Hmm. He's probably looking for a different kind of medicine. Well then... It would seem that everything is in place. Let's go meet our old friend. Take this man away. This does not involve him. Yan Ching. And so, everyone is present. I never thought the High Cloud Quintet would be able to gather again in the same place after hundreds of years. If I remember correctly, the five of us made a promise here seven centuries ago. We promised that no matter what happened, we would gather here together and share a drink. How sad that Scale Gorge Waterscape remains empty while the world continues to turn. Some of us have been reborn while others were denied death. Some have become criminals, while others can no longer fulfill their promises. And in the end, our friendship is no more. Soon, I will be shackled and tried. 
this will be the last you see of me. This is why I sent out the invitations before departing, hoping that everyone would be gathered here for my final farewell. Of five people, three must pay a price. In Bibiter Lune, the chief culprit chose to use the Transmutation Arcanum as a means of resurrection, begetting terrible transformation and great calamity in the process. He dishonored the name of the Fallen, Ying Sing, the accomplice, arrogant and oblivious, used the flesh of the Abundance Emanator to assist in Bibiter Lune in his evil. He fell, becoming an immortal abomination. As for Jing Liu, the sinner, she succumbed to Mara, slaughtered her people, and abandoned her oath. Now it is time we pay for what we have done. Don Hung, you can never escape the shadow of Inviter Lune. He is your origin, and his sins will accompany you in your path forward until you meet your eventual doom. Blade, what a fitting name. In the remainder of your infinite life, you will experience only murder and your own death, all the while pleading for a place to rest. This is the only way you are able to relinquish Ying Sing's regrets. And I will face the punishment of the Alliance and suffer an eternal punishment before paying an even worse price. That is the only way to keep the memory of the pain of the past from fading away. High Cloud Quintet, it is time to say goodbye. A wineless gathering, accompanied by only sadness and bitterness. <sighs> what a depressing reunion. Jing Yuan, is it not time you sent me to the Shuling? The laws of the Alliance cannot be subject to change. Unfortunately, your next stop will be the Yuchu. I reported everything to the Marshal and the Seer strategists just so happened to take an interest in the case. They set up a Decalite Reflection Barrier in hopes of meeting the two of you beforehand. Jing Yuan, you haven't changed at all. Always trying to destroy the plans of others. But in the end, whether it be you, me, the Cloud Knights, or the Generals of the Rainbow Arbiter, we are all just pawns in a game of the gods. I am sick and tired of treading on a predetermined path. No matter, I will deviate if you insist. But this does not change how things will end. Ultimately, I will stand on the side of victory. Then I shall see this gamble through. Wait! Jing Liu, before you leave, you still owe me my due. I have tried. Besides inflicting more wounds on your body, there is nothing else I can do for you. The immortality that you possess 
is not something that can be dealt with so easily. I am sure Destiny's slave already told you that the swords of mortals are incapable of killing someone with the flesh of an emanator. He did. But you still owe me the attempt. I told you when I taught you the way of the sword. I am uninterested in drawing my blade against someone who does not long for life, who wants only to be slaughtered. You will only draw against an opponent. Jing Liu, allow me to repay you for your teachings. You. Savor the moment. I will deliver you a brief moment of death. We were here once, 700 years ago. <laughs> Laughing, sparring, and thinking about the future. <laughs> Their faces still linger before my eyes, like a bygone dream. I thought those joyful days would flow indefinitely before us, like a Sienjo lifetime. Yet, dreams. will eventually fade like clouds from the sky. A familiar feeling. Almost as if we've returned to my first sword lesson. You used the sword in Sing crafted, and pierced, sliced, and impaled me time and time again. The sword play used to slay our enemies of old is still engraved on this despicable shell. All I can do is watch my flesh become severed, healed, and restored. It's as if they're sane. Why? Why did you and Imbibitor Lune commit such an unforgivable sin? I know that you have no interest in my answer. Which is why I asked the question as you looked me straight in the eye. I've asked myself that same question infinite times, but was never able to find the answer. Why? Why is it that only the abominations can return time and time again? Why does someone like her have to be buried, burned to ash, and eventually forgotten? Why? In the end, you unleashed the final piercing blow and left both me and the sword in the withered grave. The miraculous thing is that in my brief moment of death, all the pain went away. Like when we drank to drown our sorrows. Bibiter Lune, what do you plan on doing next? 
Once this gathering ends, I will return to the Express to continue my journey. The Express won't be able to carry you forever. Your friends all have burdens of their own, just as we did back then. I did think about giving up on revenge and letting go of everything when I fled the Lawfu years ago. However, as time passed, it became more and more clear. It was like an old friend that accompanied me every passing day, always nagging in my ear. The memories of what I did when I was Mara struck are deeply rooted. Since I am unable to rid myself of them, I decided to face them head on in the end. Maybe when I witness the fall of the abundance, you and Ying Sing will find true release. Goodbye, Imbibitor Lune. Dan Hung, the general wants me to forget about everything I saw today. I understand. These disputes are far too complicated for me right now. Swordplay is a lot simpler. I have some close friends of my own in the Cloud Knights. Will we fall out the way you guys did? Goodbye for now, Dan Hung. I hope. The next time we meet, it'll be under happier circumstances. She couldn't do it with her sword either. She still couldn't do it. We have no choice but to continue the pursuit. This is the price the two of us must pay. I will see it through. Elio's script still requires you to stay alive. For now. I don't mind prolonging my vengeance. It might be... More interesting that way. <sighs> She's gone. All this must have seemed like a silly performance to someone newly reborn. But I am unable to prevent my old friends from taking sides against one another. Who you are is a question that only you can find the answer to. Even if the Preceptor's interference denied you a true rebirth. Yes, it has been a long day for you. Don Hong. <laughs>